good evening, good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. And welcome to the Hour of Power Bible Study of New Life International Ministries. I am the pastor overseer, Eric Bell, and we're just so excited to be back on tonight for another word experience. I pray that you all are having a blessed week, a good week. I tell you, I tell you, it is beautiful, a beautiful day. And so we're just excited. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Again, I hope and pray that all of you are having a blessed day. I am the pastor, Overseer Eric Bell, and this is the Our Power Bible Study of New Life International Ministries. Our address is 1985 Vineville Avenue, right here in the great city of Macon, Georgia. And so we thank each of you for those of you all that are coming in right now. Praise God for you. And again, I hope that you all are, are having a, a blessed day, a blessed week. I want to invite you to come on out and be with us this Sunday, every Sunday at 1015 for our the New Life Worship Experience. I promise you, it will bless you in a mighty, mighty way. So again, I'm just excited for each of you. Uh, good to see you all coming. Blessing, Elder, how you doing? Good to see you. All right, Elder Sandra, Elder Pat, good to see you all. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Our New Life family, we're coming in, and I'm just, thank God for each of you. I really, really do. All right, Elder Sean, how are you? Good to see you. All right, I hope, Sean, that you were satisfied with uh, 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 beautiful braids I did. I saw you put it on Facebook. <laughs> Right, right. Amen. That's one of our, our new life our leaders. Amen. I just like to pick at her. Amen. But no, we're just so excited to be on tonight. I really do praise God for each of you. Hey, do me a favor. Let's go ahead and tag and share. You all know how we do it. Let's get our numbers up. Let's tag our new life family and friends. Let's tag them and get our numbers up for tonight because there is another teach, uh, another word, revelation, rain of word to be taught and released tonight. It's going to bless you real good. So do me a favor. Go ahead and share. Go ahead and share, tag and share this Bible study. Tag and share this Bible study. I do thank God for each of you that are coming in tonight. I really do. Hey, Elder Pat, how are you? Good to see you. All right. I see you, Elder Sean. I'm about to stop it. <laughs> no, man, I really do. I, I thank God for you also. Go ahead and tag and share. Tag and share. Uh, share this on your page. Just hit the share button. And then go ahead and start tagging family and friends that you see that are not on. Um, because I'm telling you, there's another word tonight that's going to bless you real good. I promise you. It's going to bless you real good. Hey, Sister Emma, how are you doing? Darlene, how are you? I missed your Sunday, Darlene. Good to see you, though. All right, good to have you on tonight. Hey, Amen. I do pr praise God for all of you that are coming in. I do. And pray that you all are having a blessed week. A blessed week. Hey, I want to invite you all to get ready um, for this. This weekend is our State of Georgia Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, our state uh, uh, conference, our virtual state conference. I'm telling you this Saturday and Sunday. Listen, go to fullgospelbaptist.org and, uh, and, and, and you will see what we're, what we're having. Amen. Go to my Facebook page. Uh, uh, you will get, uh, you'll see the flyer. I'm sorry. You'll see the flyer for our state conference. Amen. Make sure you register. It's going to be this Saturday and Sunday. This Saturday and Sunday, I'll post a flyer on this Facebook page immediately after we sign off. But make sure you go in and register. I'm telling you, this is going to be an awesome conference. You're talking about empower, empowerment. You're talking about awesome praise and worship. You're talking about a, a rhema of preach word, man. It's going to be great teaching, great preaching, great worshiping. And you don't want to miss it. That's the our 2021 State of Georgia Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, our state virtual conference. Hey, all right, Sister Natalie, how you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Listen, y'all go ahead and tag and share, tag and share, tag and share. And we're getting ready on next Sunday, next Saturday, Out the Box Ministry. What is out there? We're, we're doing something a little different. And this time, Out the Box Ministry, that's uh, next Saturday. From five to eight, those of you all that like to play spades, tonk, uh, uh, biz whiz, all that, we're going to have our card game tournament. 
next Saturday. That's our out the box ministry from five to eight there in the fellowship hall at the church. So go on and get your partners, get your team together. We're going to have a good time. Our faith, family, fellowship, amen, faith, family, fellowship, and food. We're going to have free food. Amen. Come on out and be with us. That's next Saturday from five to eight. Uh, that's our, our new out the box ministry. We're going to do something a little different. We're going to have a spades tournament. All right. Get your team. We're going to have talk. Uh, biz with phase 10 we're going to do all uno we're going to have all of that so make sure you mark it on your calendar next saturday from five until eight it's going to bless you and don't forget this saturday our state conference start from from uh this saturday and sunday so make sure you actually it's on the facebook page now you'll see if i posted it last week but once we get off i'll repost it again the flyer where you can go and register. You can go and register for our state conference. It's going to bless you real good. All right, come on. Let's come on, tag and share, tag and share. Let's get some more of our New Life members and family and friends in. Let's get them in tonight. All right, all right. We got about 30 more seconds, and we're going to get started because God has released another word. Woo, he's released another word. It's going to bless you real good. But I thank God for those of you all that are on tonight. They have logged in thus far. Amen. I praise God for you and I pray again that you all are having a blessed week. Well, beloved, let's go ahead and dive into it tonight. Um, as you all know, I like to lay before God and hear what he wants to say. Uh, I rarely, you know, I just don't go and prepare. Amen. Just, just arbitrarily just go. I like to hear God and hear what he's saying. As you all know, we've been dealing, amen, with revival, revival for quite a while. Uh, for quite a while and the Lord is like taking us through different uh, areas and, and, and showing us the, the necessities and all the attributes of this great revival that has already begun. Uh, last week we talked about might, how God, how he, he, he has given us might. He's bestowing might upon us, something that we've never looked at and never, never really focused on, the might of God, the might of God. Then the week prior to that we talked about reflection. What are you reflecting? What are you reflecting as we're talking about this revival where there's going to be miracle signs and wonders? And those miracle signs and wonders are going to be performed. Excuse me, they're going to be performed by us, by you. And so God is just, just showing us what's happening, how leading up to it, the, the things, the attributes, that, the characteristics of all of those things that is necessary for this revival, for he he's going to use us, amen, to show the world that he is God and that and that his spirit lives within us. Are y'all hearing me, beloved? So uh, last week we talked about the might of God. Here we go. Tonight God has spoken again. Uh, my time has been a kind of busy day, but the Lord has spoken again, beloved. Here it is. God says, watch this. I need for you all to hear this. The Lord said, that we, the body, we, you, me, we are in a transformation. God Almighty, we are in a transformation. I need for you all to go ahead and type that word in. Type this in. I'm in a transformation. I'm in a transformation. Oh yeah, the Lord said it. He said it so clear. He said it so clear in my time of meditation. He said, let them know that they are in transformation. I am transforming them. I'm literally transforming. I'm in transformation. I'm literally, says the Lord, transforming them. Watch this right before their eyes. God Almighty. He said, and the transformation is imperative. This transformation, people of God, it is imperative. This transformation is very important. It's vital. This is a part of, of what God is doing. I know that you don't understand it. I don't understand it. Uh, uh, but he said it's not for you to understand, God. It's for you to submit to the transformation, God. Oh God, he, uh, I feel the anointing. He just said that, tell them to submit to the transformation because I am literally transforming them. I am literally transforming them. You are in a transformation. 
a transformation, watch this, to fit the revival that has already begun. Are you hearing me? That's what's happening. That's what's going on. I can't figure it out. No, you cannot. This is why the Lord is speaking. He's speaking. He's saying that you, the body, all of the submitted people, that you are in a transformation. You are in a transformation. I am in a transformation. The body is in a transformation. God said, I'm transforming. I'm transforming. It is, in, it is essential that I transform. I'm transforming you by my power, by my might. Watch this. Into what I need and want you to be. Watch this. Now, the transformation, the transformation, your transformation. Watch this. Oh, hear me. God said, don't look to be transformed into somebody else beside you. He said, look to be transformed into what I am doing in you and through you. See, the danger is that we want our transformation to look like somebody else. God say, no, that is not what's going to happen. Your transformation will not look like someone else's. Your process of transformation will not be like someone else's because God said what I'm transforming you into, watch this, will not be like someone else. So therefore, your process of transformation will be totally different than someone else's. This is why you've got to stay focused and keep your eyes on the Lord. I'm speaking to you because the transformation that you are currently experiencing is a God thing. It is not a man thing. It is not something, watch this, that is going to actually look like someone else's transformation. This is why you've got to keep your eyes on the Lord. Are you hearing me? I hear it. Thank you, beloved. <coughs> Excuse me. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing already. Mm-hmm. Watch this. Watch this. Come on, tag and share. Tag and share. Let's look at the definition of transformation. When you look at transformation, the root word is transform. Watch this. It's transform. And when you put T-I-O-N, that changes it from a one-time thing, transform, to an ongoing thing. Your transformation, see, now this is what's going to mess you up. Because you think that your transformation is a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. Your transformation is constantly, you're constantly being transformed. You are constantly in transformation mode. You are constantly in transformation mode, says the Lord. Transformation means this. Here's the definition. A marked change as in appearance or character, usually for the better. Let me say it again, beloved. The definition of transformation. A marked change. As in appearance or character. See, watch this. You are literally tra being transformed both internally and externally. God, y'all better hear this. God say this. I'm transforming you both internally and externally. And you got to understand this. Why all of a sudden now you're losing weight and or gaining weight and all of these? It's like, man, what's going on? I'm trying to do everything. Mm -mm. God said, I'm transforming you both internally and externally to match what I want you to be. Uh-huh. I need for you all to get that. He said in I'm a uh, uh, transformation, the definition, a marked change as in appearance or character, usually for the better. And the Lord said to tell us, to tell you, I'm transforming you externally and internally. So there's a lot of things that are happening to your natural body. That's why, watch this, I'm about to help somebody. Let me speak prophetically. He just gave this to me. 
You wonder why you've been feeling sick in your natural body, but you can't explain it. You've been feeling ill. You've been feeling sick. You've been feeling lightheaded. You've been feeling faint. You've been feeling like you want to just, just regurgitate, vomit. Like, man, what is going on? What's happening is God is transforming your natural body too. So he's transforming you internally and externally. That's why your head hurts you. You like your equilibrium is off. You like is my blood pressure up? You know, all of these things, and and you can't sleep, and not all of a sudden your sleeping pattern has changed here lately. You you're restless. You like I got insomnia. I can't sleep. I, I you know I don't, I don't get what's going on. Where did this come from? I've been sleeping well. I've been resting well. Now all of a sudden I can't sleep. I can't rest. I'm up all time of the night. I'm reading books, trying to do everything. Well, what it is, your body is being transformed by God. Are you hearing me? Some clothes you can't fit no more, whether they're too small or too big, because God is transforming you. You are in a state of transformation internally and externally. Are y'all hearing me, beloved? Are y'all hearing me? So here's some revelatory nuggets that he gave me. Oh God, here's some revelatory nuggets that he gave me. I hope these niggas bless you like they bless me today. Here it is. Watch this. He said, you're either transforming into what you want, what the devil wants, or what God wants. Transformation is occurring. He said, you're either, you're, you're either transforming into what you want. And some of y'all right now, you're fighting God. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. I want to do it. You know, uh, mm, who God? Some of you all are saying this right now. I don't think I'm ready. I don't think I'm ready for this. Uh-huh. I don't think I'm ready for this. I don't feel like I'm ready. I got some more things that I got to do. Watch this. Here's, oh God, I've got to get myself together. There's some things that I'm struggling with that I'm dealing with. And I know that it's not going to be seeming to God. God said, don't you know I already know right about that? He said, so, so what's happening, you're trying to take my transformation into what you want and how you want to do it. Some of y'all fighting God. Uh-huh. Because it ain't how you want. Nothing right. Oh, God. Let me know. I'm up in your house. Watch this. Nothing in your life right now is adding up to what you thought. Nothing. It, it ain't adding up. It just it ain't to what you thought. God said, I am transforming you. That's why you can't sleep. That's why you can't rest. That's why you know, you know what? You try to talk to somebody about it. You can't even talk to nobody. It's like nobody don't understand. Why? Because your transformation is individually. But here's the thing. You fight God. Because God has all, mm, God has already shifted you, but you're trying to resist the shift. Oh, let me prophesy this for somebody. Stop trying to resist the shift. God. Uh-huh. Because it's not doing it the way. Stop trying to resist the shift. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Stop trying to resist the shift. Uh-huh. You still, I want to take it slow. Uh-oh. He just let me hear this. This was something else y'all been saying. I want to make sure I hear from the Lord. The Lord said, by now you don't know my voice. <laughs> let me say it again. Some of y'all try to, you try to do it the way you want. Well, I, you know, I, I just need to take my time. I need to hear from God. And the Lord told me to tell you. You mean to tell me by now you don't know my voice? That's a cop out to your complacency. God said that's a cop out to your complacency. Yeah, yeah, that's a cop. I, I want to hear from the Lord. I need to make sure. That's a cop out for your complacency. That ain't nothing but a cop out for your complacency. So you trying to do it. Watch this. You trying to do it. He said, either you going you either you're doing it the way you want or the way or what the devil wants. That's the next thing. What the devil wants. You 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 know what? I I'm just going, you know what? I'm gonna do my own thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna duck and dodge and hide and do all of this stuff as if God don't see. I'm gonna duck and dodge and do what the devil wants. That ain't what I want to do. That's a trick of the devil. That's not what I want to do. In the moment, oh God, the moment that you are challenged, what happens? You ready to tuck tail and run. The moment that you are challenged, uh-huh, that's what the devil wants. 
Uh huh. So he want to transform you. See, see. Let me show you how the devil transformation will work. The devil transformation will keep you where you are. Mm hmm. It, it want to keep you right. I want to. I want to keep transforming you into you. I want to keep transforming you into you. Old habits, old behaviors that you've been taught all of your life. Stuff that you've been taught and, and observed and doing all of your life. That, that's the devil's transformation. Uh-huh. This is what the devil wants. I want to keep you doing all of that foolishness. I want to keep you doing all of that stuff that you were taught and trained. See, see, we've been taught and trained how to do it real good. Mm-hmm. You're the, we got a PhD in it. We got a PhD in, in everything that we've been taught and trained how to do. All of our upbringings and all that foolishness. Uh, -huh, that's what the devil want to keep. I want to keep transforming you into all of that stuff. We, you know, we've learned how to do the mess. The man, he told me this the other day that it messed me up. We become a master cover up. We know how to cover up stuff real good. And the Lord said, that's, that's, uh huh. The devil want to keep me far. He want to keep transforming you into that stuff. And then finally, he said, are you going to do it what I want? What I want. Uh huh. He said, you're either transforming to what you want, what the devil wants, or what God wants. Now, here it is. Now, as we're talking about transformation, watch this. Here's something else that he gave me. You are becoming unrecognizable from what you were. <laughs> he said, as transformation is occurring. You are becoming unrecognizable from what you were. There are some people who are still looking for the old you. They're looking for the you that was buried in the pit. They're looking for the you that was buried in the grave. Mm -mm. He said, you are becoming unrecognizable from what you were. That's a part of the transformation. There's some people say, I don't know you no more. No, you don't. You really don't. You don't. Because God is transforming and you still want to stay there. You're becoming unrecognizable from what you were. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Make sure that you're going through the God transformation. Oh, man, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. He said this. You are becoming unrecognizable from what you were. Uh-huh. There's some people, Eric Bell, listen, some of y'all don't know me no more. Uh-huh. You might, I may have this physical faith, but you don't know me no more. Oh, God. Why? Because God said, I'm transforming you. You're becoming unrecognizable. Oh, God, y'all better hear me. I'm trying to help you tonight. I'm trying to help you. We're talking about transformation. Not only that, here is another one that he gave me. Oh, God, this is going to bless you real good. Your transformation must match your transfiguration. Oh my God. Hear this. Your transformation must match your transfiguration. You remember when Jesus was transfigured? What does transfiguration mean? We know what transformation means. Transformation means a marked change as in appearance or character. Transfiguration means, watch this, a change that glorifies or exalts. Your transformation must match your trans, your transfiguration. Trans, see what you don't understand. God is glorifying you. God is glorifying you. God has glorified. God is illuminating you. What you don't get, what you don't. God is exalting you. It's something when God exalts you. God is, watch this, uh, God is exalting you. He said, I'm glorifying you. Now your transformation must match your, tra your transfiguration. Watch this, your appearance and your character, your mark change, now must match the glory and the exaltation that I'm doing or have done in your life. So what's happening here, beloved, your transformation must met your transfiguration. Let me bring it to context. A mark change, your mark change as an appearance or character must match the change of glorification and exaltation that God has already done in your life. See, what you don't get is that God, God is glorifying you. He's exalting you. It's something when God exalts you. 
You don't have to exalt yourself. You don't have to look for men to exalt you. You don't have to do all of that. God is exalting you. When God exalts you, when God glorifies you, everyone will see it. They can't help but to see you. You ain't got to put yourself out there. You don't have to do all of that stuff through the flesh. God, when as God is exalting you and glorify you, he, you will be. They can't. They can't. They can't miss you. They can't avoid you. Why? Because God has transfiguring you. You. He's already transfiguring you, which means <laughs> glorify and exalt. Are you hearing me? Oh God, y'all better hear me tonight. Transformation. Y'all better hear me tonight. Here's the next one. Here's the next revelatory nugget. Your transformations are happening so fast that you don't have time to adapt to what you transform to. Did y'all hear that? The Lord said, your transformations are happening so fast that you don't have time to adapt to what you transform into. This thing is happening so quick. God is doing a quick work. He's doing a quick work. He said your transformations are happening so fast that you don't have, okay, I'm being transformed in this. So, okay. All right, so let me adapt to this. He said this thing is happening so quick, you don't have time to adapt to what you're being transformed into. He said this transformation is happening like this. Transformation, 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 transformation. As soon as you you think you got one thing figured out, bam, he don't shifted you somewhere else. As soon as you got got it, bam, he don't shifted you because he said I'm doing a quick work. Your transformations are happening in the spirit. Some of y'all like okay, oh, uh, uh, okay, oh, uh, I think I got this now. And as soon as you think you got this flow of the spirit, bam, he transformed you again. As soon as you think you got that, bam, here comes something else he's adding for you to do. As soon as you think you got, bam, you're like, man, I don't get this. I ain't even got settled in this. I haven't even mastered this. See, the problem is you trying to master it through your flesh when God has already mastered it when he gave it to you. <laughs> when God gave it to you, you already had the mastery. <laughs> when God gave it to you, he, you already had the mastery. But what you're trying to do, you're trying to bring it into your cardinal comprehension and your cardinal understanding. When God said, when I, do you not know that when I chose you and called you, I already gave it to you. I gave you the blueprint. I gave you the instruction. I gave all, it's already there. But what you're trying to do is bring it to your humanistic comprehension. Well, this guy got to be, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do that. No, no, no. Your transformations are happening so fast that you don't have time to adapt to what you're being transformed into. You ain't got time. Yeah, that's why it happens so fast. And see, it's so why, let me help you why you're having those headaches so bad. Because you're trying to figure out each transformation, and by the time you think you don't figure this one out, he don't shift at you again. He don't, he has glorified you and exalted you again into another place. Uh huh. Are y'all hearing me? Uh huh. I just helped somebody did. So stop trying to figure it out and just flow. See, that's the key. Just flow. Just, I just helped somebody then. I just helped, just flow. Just flow because you're going to drive yourself crazy trying to figure it out. You ain't going to figure it out. This is a spiritual thing. This is not natural. You're trying to take your cardinal mind to understand a spiritual move. It ain't going to work. You're going to drive yourself crazy. Because it's not, this is not a natural thing that's happening. This transform, this thing is happening, it's a spiritual, it's, it's being spiritually induced by God. 
And the natural man is not going to understand it, even though external and internal transformation is happening. Yeah. So your transformation is happening so fast. Here's another one. Here's another one that he gave me. The rapid transformations are happening because you have to get there fast. God said, I got to get you there. You don't have 30 more years to waste. You don't have 10 to 15 more years to waste. You don't have time to waste. God said, these transformations are happening so fast because I got to get you there fast. The rapid transformations are happening because you have to get there fast. God said, I got to get you there and I got to get you there quick. Man, you better hear me. Well, God, why are you doing it like this? He said, I don't have time to waste. I've, uh, mm, I've already given you enough time to waste. Now you don't have no more time to waste. I've got to get you there quickly. God, y'all better, better hear me. Y'all better hear me. He said, I got to get you there quickly. You ain't got time to waste no more. Ain't no more patty taking. Ain't no more playing. Ain't no more. There is, oh, listen. God said, I got to get you there quick. Because, mm, God. He said, because, the reason why I got to get you there quick, because some folks are still rejecting me and I'm moving them out the way. There's some folks in position but don't have that anointing. The grace has gone. And God said, I'm moving up. They don't even recognize. It's just like when, 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 when Saul, when God had taken his hands off of Saul, he told Samuel, Samuel, just walk with me so the people would think that, no, no, you don't play the game so long. You don't play. And Lord said, you know what? I ain't fooling with it no more. The grace is not on you no more. Though you in the position, but the grace has removed you out the way. God Almighty. And I got to get you. I, I've got to transform you quickly. You, I got to transform you so fast because I've got to get you in position. Because that's some folks who didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do it. So God said, guess what? Doop. Out. Bring it. God don't tell you transformation. Transformation. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. Saul was still in the position. But the grace had been removed. And he knew it. He knew it. He said, Samuel, please walk with me before the people. So the people will think that, you know, I'm still good. Okay. Uh-huh. So rapid transformation will happen because you have to get that fast. Here's another one that we gave me. Now, now I need for y'all to pay attention to this one. I need you to pay attention to this. This is very important. Um, it, it, it hit me first. This minister to me first. Let this minister to you. This is going to help you. Hear me. Cardinal people cannot handle your rapid transformations because you have exceeded them in a lesser time. Woo, God. Cardinal people, they can't handle how God is moving so fast, how you are being transformed so fast. Why? Because you have exceeded them already. In a lesser time. <laughs> Wait a minute. How you moving so fast? So quick. See, and so what's happening is causing enmity. That same enmity mm, between like Cain and Abel, that type of enmity. See, that's the worst kind because you can't see it, you can't feel, you can't touch it, but it's there. This is what's happening. Why? Because God is transforming you so quickly, so rapid, and you have exceeded them in a lesser time, and they can't handle it. Don't, but the Lord said this, don't worry about that. Hear me. Because see, some of you all are struggling with your transformation because, you know, this, this is how I'm, 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 I'm peeping tongue in you right now. I don't want to step on nobody's feet. I don't want to think nobody think I'm taking over. Listen, that's cardinal. And those who are in tune with the spirit will see it on you and won't get out, won't get caught up in carnality like that. Well, who they think they are, who he think he is, who God said this. Listen, 
Your rapid cardinal people can't handle your rapid transformation because you have exceeded them in a lesser time. How they could? I've been saved 50 years. Now, who they think they are going to That's carnality. And then it's causing enmity, jealousy, envy. Why? Because God is moving you, transforming you. Your transformation is happening so rapid that it, you have exceeded them in a lesser time. My God today, are you hearing me? Final revelatory nugget. I need for y'all to grasp this. I need for you to hear this, beloved. Final nigga, before we go into Logos. Hear me. The devil don't want you to hear this one right here. Your transformations are essential to others' destinations. God. Why is the resistance so strong? Why is all of this happening? Hear me, beloved. Your transformations are essential to others' destinations. In other words, you got to be transformed because if you get stuck and don't want to go through your transformation, you're going to hinder, watch this, other people that has been assigned to you. To lead to their destinations. God almighty. See, what the enemy don't want you to know is that you have, that God has assigned people to you. Yes, you. You, the one that's the, I don't want to do that. The one that said, just let me, don't bother me. Just let me sit still. Just let me just sit here. Don't, you know, you give me time and all that kind of stuff. You, what you don't understand is that God has assigned people to you. You don't know. See, that's why the enemy don't want y'all to come to church. He don't want y'all to get in corporate fellowship. He don't got you in a slump that's hard to break. He don't got you in a pattern. It's hard for you to come to church now because you've gotten so used to not coming to church. But little do you know, there are people that God is sending to the church that has been assigned to you. And you not being in position, in place, you are you're messing up somebody else's destination because watch this you have allowed the devil to get you into a place of complacency for this last 15 months uh-huh this last year and a half uh-huh now it's hard for you to get in the routine it's hard for you to break that cycle when that's a trick of the enemy your transformations are essential to uh to others destination y'all better hear me uh huh. Right, so you you put your transformation on pause because you don't allow yourself, you don't allow a demon to get you in a rut. Now it's hard to break that cycle. Hard for you to break it. It seems like you can get up every day of the week, but Sunday morning it's like a ton of bricks are on you. That's a spirit. Mm hmm. You can go anywhere else. But it seems like you just struggle so bad on Sunday mornings to go to your church. That's a spirit. <laughs> because your transformations are essential to others' destinations. Now let's go into Logos. Because I, I can't wait to get into this. I can't wait to get into this. Let's go into Logos. Y'all know those that are cl close to me know that one of, one of my favorite biblical characters is Joseph. As we're talking about transformation, Joseph, Joseph, Genesis chapter 42, Genesis chapter 43, and Genesis chapter 45. As we're talking about transformation, let me tell you, oh God, he just gave me this. Oh God, y'all know I love this. I love the, I love the biblical character Joseph. He said this, every, the pit, Part of his wife, the prison, and the palace, all of those were part of his transformation. The pit was a part of his transformation. The prison was a part of his transformation. 
Potiphar's wife was a part of his transformation. Back in the prison was doing a, was a part of his transformation. And the palace was part of his transformation. Everything, everything, as we're talking about this revival, everything that you are, is a part of your transformation. But the enemy want to mess with, get you to mess with your mind so you don't look at it like that. But I need for somebody to type this in. It's part of my transformation. Joseph man was, let me tell you, let me show you what happens when, when transformation occurs. Let's go Genesis chapter 42. I'm going to read a little bit. Genesis chapter 42, verses 6 through 8. Somebody need to drop a seed. I'm going to tell you. Somebody need to drop a, the, the, tonight we, we, we're going to build a $20 seed. Somebody need to drop a $20 seed on your transformation. Listen, uh, uh, cash app it. Cash, you put up our cash app. Dollar sign new life intl. You need to put that in. Some of y'all need to drop a seed on your transformation. You need to sow into your own because see, this is spiritual right now. You need to sow into your transformation. This is part of your transformation. You need to drop a twenty dollar seed right now onto this transformation. Let's go. Genesis chapter forty two, verses six through eight. Genesis chapter 42, verses 6 through 8. This is part of your transformation. Watch this. Joseph was in charge of the country. Man, look what transformation did. That's why we, we just, that last point, the last repertoire of your transformation is essential to others' destination. Joseph, remember, the prison, the pit, the prison, Potiphar's wife, the prison, the palace, was a part of Joseph, was his transformations to get him right here. Joseph was in charge of the country. God Almighty. The very man that was in the pit, thank you, thank you, Elder Sean. The very man that was once in a pit, the very man that was caught up in a scandal with Potiphar's wife, the very man that was in locked up in prison, this was part of his transformation. Watch this. And watch this. This transformation put him in the position where God wanted him. Joseph was in charge of the country. God Almighty. Mm. He was in charge of the this same man that was in the pit. See, some of y'all can't see yourself in charge of the country. See, some of you, that's the problem. This transformation, you can't see yourself being transformed to be, in, to be in charge of the country. Joseph, according to this word, 42 and 6, Joseph was, uh, was in charge of the country. He sold grain to all these people. His brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the ground. When Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them. But he treated them like strangers and spoke harshly to them. Where do you come from? He asked. From the land of the Canaan to buy food, they replied. Although Joseph, catch this, recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. Your transformation <laughs> going to cause you to, to change where you're going to recognize them, but they ain't going to recognize you. God. Now, here's the challenge. Here's the challenge. You got to stay humble. You got to stay humble. Although the transformation occurred, he was still Joseph. He recognized everyone that did him wrong. He recognized his brothers that did him wrong. But they didn't recognize him. They were, oh God. Little do people know. <laughs> they, are, they are speaking to the man in charge of the country. <laughs> and his name is Joseph. Little do they know they are, you, they are speaking to the next person in line who God is raising up. That's why you got to be careful. Man, you better be careful. Let me tell you something. You don't know. You're speaking Watch this. To the next one that the Lord is raising up, the next voice. 
You will see, and see, you, you got to be careful how you handle it in this, in this particular place. Are you hearing me, beloved? Because you're speaking to the next voice. You don't even know it. The next voice that God is raising up, that God is transforming. Yes, that Joseph recognized his brothers, but they didn't recognize him because God had transformed him. He don't even, oh God. He didn't look like what he went through. He didn't look like he was in a pit. He didn't look like he was a part of a scandal. He didn't look like he was a part or had been in prison. See, when God does this transformation, you won't look like what you've been through, but you're going to look like where you're going. God Almighty, <laughs> you won't look like what you went through, what you've been through, but you're going to look like where you go. This man looked like he the, the man in charge of a country. He didn't look like the pit. He didn't look like Potiphar's scandal. He didn't look like the prison. He looked like the end result. Oh, I need somebody to catch this in the spirit. I need about 15 people to type this in. I'm getting ready to look like my destiny. God Almighty. I'm getting ready to look like my destiny. Type that in, beloved. I need for you to type that in. I'm getting ready to look like my destiny. Mm. Woo -woo. You are being transformed to look like your destiny. And not, oh God, and not, not the diseases. You're getting ready to look like your destiny and not the diseases that you went through, the infection, all of that stuff. You're getting ready to look like your destiny. That's what the transformation is happening now. God. Yeah, type that in. I'm getting ready to look like my destiny. Oh, God, I'm getting ready to look like my destiny. He's transforming you to look like your destiny. God Almighty. Oh, ooh, I can't shift like that. Although Joseph recognized his brothers. Hmm. Somebody need to drop a seed on that one. God, you're getting ready to look like your destiny. Yeah, you're getting ready to look like your destiny. You need to drop a $20 seed on that. That's all I'm asking you tonight, a $20 seed. Once you drop it that one time, you ain't got to drop it no more. I want everybody on here tonight to drop this $20 seed into your transformation. Once you drop it that one time, you don't have to drop that seed no more unless you're led. Are you hearing me? But I come to tell you, you're getting ready to look like your destiny. God said, I'm trying transforming you to look like your destiny. I'm releasing a prophetic apostolic word over you tonight. I don't care what has happened. I don't care about the pit. I don't care about the scandal. I don't care about the prison. It was all part of your transformation so that you can look like your destiny. Oh God. Mm. Verse 8, but Reuben replied, didn't I tell you not to harm the boy, but you wouldn't listen? Now we must account for his blood. Let me tell you something. Don't worry about who has done what, what, and that, and all that kind of stuff. They don't have to give an account for that. Uh-huh. For everybody that wronged you, that snuck behind your back, that did all of this stuff, don't worry. Don't worry. They're going to give an account for it. But you got to stand. You have to stand. You got to stand because you got to, God is transforming you to look like your destiny. Jump down to stand. Stand verse uh, Genesis. Uh, uh, stand. Uh, up down to twenty-two uh, uh, and through twenty-four. Watch this. They did not recognize. They did not realize as they were talking. Watch this. They did not realize that Joseph understood them. See, see what a lot of people don't get is this. Just because you don't say nothing don't mean you don't know. I've been saying this for I've been saying this for a minute, and the Lord has allowed me to begin to release some stuff. Just because uh, they didn't realize that Joseph understood them. <laughs> Joseph understood everything they were saying. He just didn't say nothing. What am I saying here? See, see what you don't get is this. <laughs> what you don't understand is that in your transformation, God said, "Listen, listen." <laughs> you knew, you know, but you just weren't permitted to say anything. They did not recognize, they did not realize that Joseph understood them. They were talking and they, th they thought that they, they were speaking in a way that Joseph couldn't get them. No, Joseph understood them since there was an interpreter between them. Verse 24, he turned away from them and well. When he turned back and spoke to them, he took Simeon from them and had him bound before their eyes. 
Now let's jump over to chapter 43. I want you to catch this. I'm jumping tonight. Genesis chapter 43. Because I got to give you some scriptures. Some logos. Genesis chapter 43. Verse 15 through 20. The men took this gift. Double the amount of silver and Benjamin. They immediately went down to Egypt. And stood before Joseph. Let me help you. As you're going through transformation, there are some people that's going to come, that, that has to come and stand before you. God Almighty. Everybody that misinterpreted your transformation, they're going to have to come and stand before you. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. Come on, let's get our numbers back up. The numbers are starting to drop. Listen, listen, let me hear what the Lord said. Let me hear you. I want you to hear what the Lord said. As you're going through your transformation, as you're getting ready to look like destiny, there are some people who doubted your transformation, who didn't understand your transformation. They're going to have to come and stand before you. God Almighty. Because, watch this. You contain the key to their destination. Joseph had the key. To that destiny, to that destiny. Them folks were in a famine. They didn't have no food, but Joseph had the key. God Almighty. And they had to come stand before Joseph. They didn't understand his transformation. They didn't understand that stuff. And a lot of times when people don't understand, the first thing that they do is fight. Mm -hmm. But they're going to have to come and stand before Joseph. Verse 16, when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to his steward, take the men to my house, slaughter an animal and prepare it, for they will eat with me at, at noon. Now watch this, you get ready to make, your transformation is going to cause you, watch this, to forget what they did to you and bless them anyway. God Almighty, what happened? These very same brothers, Joseph ended up preparing this great Feast for them because see when, when God transforms you, He's not only transforming you externally, He's transforming you internally. This is why David prays the Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. Purge me with hyssop that I may be clean, wash me that I be whiter than snow, so that you'll be able to handle everyone that fought you. <laughs> I'm trying to help you tonight, beloved. See, see, Joseph went and prepared a meal for everyone that fought his transformation, for everyone that doubted his transformation. He prepared a meal. See, that's what's going to happen. This internal transformation is going to cause you to prepare a meal for everyone that messed with you. He going to give you, you're going to prepare a meal for everyone that messed with you. <laughs> That's what transformation is doing. He says it's imperative. It's happening fast. So watch this. Verse 17. The man did as Joseph had said and brought them to Joseph's, Joseph's house. But the men were afraid. His brothers were afraid because they were taken to Joseph's house. They said, listen at this. See, see, you're gonna mess folks up when you bless those that, that, that try that, that doubt your transformation. You're gonna mess them up. They're gonna think, listen to what they said. We have been brought here because of the seal that will return our bad, because we've done wrong the first time. They intend to overpower us, seize us, make us slaves, and take our donkeys. No. No. So they approached Joseph Stewart and spoke to him at the doorway of the house. They said, my Lord, we really did come down here the first time on the buy food. In other words, they were like, listen, we ain't came to do nothing crazy. Lord, they done brought us in here. Little do they know that Joseph, watch this, he was being transformed. His transformation internally made it where he could deal with them externally and not deal with what they did in the past. It was on their conscience what they did. God Almighty. Notice what they start. They went to repent. They went to repent and go, Lord, I'm sorry. You know something? We need to. And, and little did they know, Joseph was now, he had been transformed. He is now about to bless them. <laughs> and because Joseph had been transformed, they didn't recognize him. <laughs> they didn't recognize 
recognize him. They didn't recognize the transformation that had occurred. So they thought that, oh God, we, you know, you know, they start talking amongst themselves. See, I told y'all, I told y'all to leave that joke alone. I told y'all, no, y'all just kept messing with him. Y'all just kept messing with her. I told y'all to leave them alone. I told you to leave them alone. But no, y'all wouldn't listen. Now look what's happening. Now it's coming back on us. Now we got to go through. Now we about to move. And little did they know, because Joseph had been transformed, he's a, he, he's about to bless them. So you know what? I ain't worried about that. Because little did you know, your opposition, your opposition was a part of my promotion, of my transformation. So look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Jump down, let's go now. Now let's go, uh, for time's sake, let's go to uh, chapter 45 now. Chapter 45, look at verse 1. Chapter 45, verse 1. Joseph could no longer keep his composure in front of all his attendants. So he called out, send everyone away from me. No one was there with him when he revealed his identity to his brothers. Joseph said to his brothers, I'm Joseph. See, did y'all catch that? Joseph revealed his identity and they still didn't recognize him. <laughs> because when Joseph said, look, it's me, they're like, see, what you don't get is that when you reveal your identity, they still ain't going to believe it's you. <laughs> God, oh, but I just said something then. It took Joseph to do this. Joseph said to his brother, I'm Joseph. I'm your brother. And they still was going to, oh, <laughs> you don't look like the Joseph that we knew. Exactly. That's what transformation is doing. Joseph had to tell them. He had to start, watch this. Joseph, in order for them to finally get it, Joseph had to start talking their language. <laughs> Let me show you that it's me. Let me show you that it's me. Let me show you this me. This is Joseph, your brother. You remember this, this, this. You remember this, this, this. You remember, and they be like, ooh, that is Joseph. But, but he said, listen, beloved, be encouraged. I'm not here to kill you. I'm here to bless you. God Almighty. Ooh. Listen now, let me show you. Let me finish verse three. Joseph said to his brothers, I'm Joseph. Is my father still living? Listen to this. But they could not answer him because they were terrified in his presence. <laughs> Joseph sitting there telling them, no, it's me, it's me. And they were like, <laughs> they couldn't answer him because they were terrified in his presence. Because now they know this is the man in charge of the country. And they start reminiscing in their mind all that they did to him. And so now they're like, this is the big, this is the head man in charge of the country. We don't drug him and dog him out and set all manner against him. And now surely he finna kill us. They were terrified in his presence. Look at verse four. Then Joseph said to his brothers, please listen, come near me. And they came near. I am Joseph, your brother, he said. The one that you sold into Egypt. And now don't be grieved or angry with yourselves for selling me out. Because God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. God transformed me to preserve your life. My transformation is affecting your destination. That was the revelatory nugget. My transformation was essential and imperative for your destiny. If I had not gone through that transformation, I would not be here right now to save you. Because why? Hebrews and Egyptians, mm -mm, that was a no-no. Mm -mm. And the Egyptians, watch this, had all the grain. They had all the, oh God. The Egyptians had all the provision. 
The Hebrews were out there struggling, but the Egyptians had all the provision. God is setting you up in your transformation that you have the provision for the ones, watch this, that couldn't recognize your transformation. God Almighty. Verse 5. And now don't be grieved or angry with yourselves for selling me out. Because God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years. And there will be five more years without plowing or harvesting. God sent me, verse 7, sent me ahead of you to establish you as a remnant within the land and to keep you alive by a great deliverance. God Almighty. Transformation. Stop resisting your transformation. Let carnal people be mad because it's happening quicker than, than them. Than theirs. It's okay. God sent me to tell you tonight. I'm transforming you. I'm transforming you because your transformation. Your transformation is essential to others' destination. Your transformation is putting you in position to have the provision for the very ones that didn't understand. Are you hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? I need for you, if you haven't dropped your $20 seed, God Almighty, I'm pushing you tonight. I may not be your pastor. But I want you to hear the anointing. Every one of you on tonight, drop nothing less than a $20. That's all I'm asking. Drop a seed into this transformation. Your transformation. There's the cash app. Your dollar sign, New Life INTL. I may not be your pastor. This ain't about that. But I want y'all to hear me. You are in transformation. I don't want you. To drop a seed into this transformation. Into your transformation. Let me give you the rest of these scriptures. Write these scriptures down. About transformation. Psalms 51. 10 through 12. Psalms 51. 10 through 12. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Colossians or Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 22 through 24. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. And finally, 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Well, beloved, I hope and pray that you were blessed tonight by this Bible study. Listen, I want y'all to hear me. Every one of you that are on tonight, drop that seed. If you're here and you're not saved, then you want to be saved. It's nothing difficult. Transformation. God said, I'm transforming you. But you need salvation. The Bible says, if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that he was raised from the dead, he said, he said, you shall be saved. But it don't stop there. You need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was given on the day of Pentecost. It was a gift. Only thing you got to do is receive it. I pray now that you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Finally, beloved, listen. You need covering. Some of y'all just out there. You just out there. You 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 just you, you not submit. Listen, listen, listen. Your transformation. You need covering. You been you going through transformation, man. You need to be out there covered without no tra without uh, going. You don't need to be out there going through transformation without covering. You need covering. If the Lord has spoken to you, say you know what? I'm gonna connect you at new life. I'm going to tell you now, we're in a perfect church. There's no perfect church. This is bigger than that. Just type in, I want to connect, and we'll be in contact with you. 
God, I thank you for what you did tonight. I thank you for your people. God, I pray now that you will move on their behalf. You know every situation, every circumstance. Move on their behalf. Listen, beloved. Come be with us this Sunday. This Sunday at 1015. Our address is 1985 Vineville Avenue. Right here in the great city of Macon, Georgia. We just up past Fountain Car Wash. On the right in the old Scottish Rite Shrine building. Yes, come be with us. And don't forget, go on this page. Register for this Saturday and Sunday. The State of Georgia Virtual Conference of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. It's going to bless you. You need more. See, that's what we need more empowerment. Teaching, preaching, and worshiping. Come on, make sure you go do it. I appreciate uh, you all being with us tonight. And I pray that this word blessed you. Because we know here at New Life, it's not just church. It's an experience. Thank you for tuning in. Shine bright up all night. We're never slowing down. Fall in love, drunk mistakes. We're bound to hit the ground. Gotta keep this feeling, keep on breathing. Even if we're slipping away. So I close my eyes and lose my Mind you